river when it's in flood is not a safe place to be. You might have to consider uh, pulling the rip cord. Fruit bro is probably like 70, 80 pounds. This is what I'm dealing with. Pass the musk on. Okay, well here we are at Old Woman Bay on Lake Superior and Ted and I are heading to Northern Manitoba. Well, Ted is here. What's up? Yo, this thing is sick. This is the zombie apocalypse vehicle that we are gonna be driving to Northern Manitoba. We are just loading up the Mitsubishi Delica, two canoes on the roof, we're gonna be paddling each a solo Novacraft Prospector 15 for this adventure. Anyway, um, we are getting close to being ready, uh, but we have too much gear. But we are out there for a month, so. We have a month long canoe expedition on three rivers. We're going up a river called the Barrington, portaging over Haida land into the South Seal. Then we're paddling all of the South Seal to the confluence with the Seal River, which we're taking all the way to Hudson Bay, amazing country. And we're starting the trip off with a float plane flight, which is gonna leave us in a remote lake, completely off the road system. And this is gonna be me and Ted's biggest adventure since we were on a loan in 2017. How far I can really, really push my... What the <laughs> So we're really excited, got a few uh, jitters going a little bit because uh, it's a big undertaking, some serious whitewater rapids and some massive, massive remote wilderness lakes that we're gonna have to cross. One of them is over 100 kilometers long. So should be pretty interesting for sure. But before we get onto that, we're gonna have a lot of driving to do still. This has already taken me probably about six or seven hours to get here from my house, heading quite a ways further north. Uh, where we're starting our trip from is further north than the entire province of Ontario we're gonna be up near the 60th parallel so we are gonna be in the northern Canadian wilderness true wilderness expedition so feeling pretty excited big trip coming up in some ways it's you know it, it'll, it's safer to bring two canoes because if we lose one boat we'll have another one and we could get out of there but it is more weight and it is harder in a lot of ways. It's slower, etc. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Well, 
didn't see how my son Wesley was doing because he misses me already. Oh. Bears coming out of the woodworks around here. I got him a bit, but not really good. I picked up the wrong He's camera. He's like right in there. saw a black bear really cool uh, misty rainy time it's a little sketchy uh, with visibility we just passed through Dryden uh, we're heading into Kenora and uh, beautiful drive across the North Shore of Lake Superior as usual amazing wildlife three moose a couple bears Ted even saw a bunny a little cute little bunny you know <laughs> you know <sighs> and a fox did you just see a fox? No. Then you're just going straight and then you're gonna go around a roundabout. Imagine dark brown specks covering the land as far as the eye can see. In only a few years this landscape was transformed. The multitude of bison that roamed the plains disappeared. This was the fate of plains bison in Manitoba. Now all that can be seen in Manitoba are farm bison like these ones and a small reintroduced herd that lives in an enclosure in Riding Mountain National Park. Okay, and we are heading due north in Manitoba. We're going for Snow Lake at this point of the trip. We drove through the plains. We saw some bison. We saw a ton of pelicans. I didn't even know there was pelicans here. That's awesome. And uh, now we're kind of back in the mixed forest, uh, spruce, jack pine, and poplar. And we drove through a couple big burns. Beautiful, beautiful sunset, big sky, clouds, and everything just gorgeous. Um, and we are basically gonna find a place to pull over and camp and sleep inside this vehicle. Interesting. Seats all fold down into a bed. And, uh, the benefit of having going on a canoe trip means uh, 
My dollar gear is already waterproof, so we can just kind of pull it over the car. ever brought before literally two of these bags full of camera gear including a 25 pound solar generator and a panel to boot how's that Ted sweet ready to turn in check my old Garmin instinct solar watch here 1020 still bright about the north at this time of year. Oh, I think I'm gonna get setting up the tent for sure. All right, well, this is gonna be home for the night. Okay, so we are about three and a half hours out of Snow Lake and uh, this is where we camped last night. Had a good sleep actually in the van. Um, it was pretty hot yesterday so at first when we tucked in it was pretty muggy in there and Ted decided to not use a sleeping bag but then the temperature dropped quite a bit and he woke up freezing his buns off and I was uh, none the wiser. But uh, yeah, worked out pretty good. Uh, you know, got packed up, got the seats folded up. Um, and of course the seats fold nicely down into a bed there and we uh, load all our stuff back in. One thing that's concerning me a little is how windy it is. It's a nice day, but with all the massive lakes we have, this wind will create large white caps. So hopefully this wind is just a weather system coming through here and it dies off some. So that's a little concerning. And also the amount of horse flies. A few horse flies in here. <laughs> is a little concerning there's a lot of horse flies and they're like just those big ones they like put a nasty bite on you if they can get you but usually you can get them first but uh yeah so hopefully the horse flies die off water levels i've heard are still pretty high um, that's going to make the upriver travel more challenging for sure and of course the white water more challenging but we're also hoping that maybe some of the shallow rapids we might be able to wade up because of the higher water as opposed to having to portage up rocks so you never know we'll never know until we get there really and so we are ready to hit the road all right So a bit of a logistical update. It looks like both of us are gonna drive to Leaf Rapids now and I just got off the phone with Google Air Services. So he'll be able to fly with a full tank, bring extra fuel with him. If we don't even go to Snow Lake, he just flies from Snow Lake, meets us in Leaf Rapids and then does two trips out of Leaf. So we just saved ourselves about an hour and a half each way of driving and we are no longer headed to Snow Lake. We're headed to Thompson, so awesome, uh, good little logistical plan there. We had to wrap our heads around it a bit, but it turns out to be a good one. So yeah, um, off to Thompson tomorrow morning. Ted and I pick up our shuttle driver, drive to Leaf Rapids, and that way Ted and I will be together on the drive, which will be great for all kinds of reasons. So getting there, we're getting there. Lake Winnipeg. Massive lake. Man, it's been a journey, eh, Ted? 
It has. A lot of driving, but very beautiful. Tomorrow we're going to have to drive three and a half hours just all on gravel, too. So we still have a ways to go before we get to Leaf Rapid. Our jumping off point is basically almost at the end of the road. Well, that way to Snow Lake. This way to Thompson. So we're skipping Snow Lake. We'll be in Thompson, hour and 31 minutes. Just uh, basically pulled off at the side of the highway on our way to Thompson. That's a lot of dead horse flies. And there's supposed to be a good waterfall. I can hear it, I can see it, and it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, it also looks like we're gonna have some pretty high water because this river looks swollen. Lovely ice. Look at this incredible waterfall. Looks quite high. That's beautiful. The lynx is part legend, part water, and part in it. Crouched where he is beneath the water or among the trees, the peace who sees with man's eyes. In one glimpse, the scene is green, black, gold, blue, and frozen in the white rainbow. The spruce, the rock, the stillness, witness Mishapishu's white anger. The winds dare not touch, ripple, or stir the fallen water. Without stops, the roar grows into a silence. No sound is heard until left behind, and then is heard forever. Well, we just checked out a really cool falls. Pisu Falls. Pisu means link in Cree. Beautiful falls. Checked out a suspension bridge just right off the highway. Uh, but uh, we are now concerned because we are almost out of diesel fuel and we have about 50 minutes to the next gas station and we're like almost on empty. Maybe we pull in here and fill up, Ted. Anyways, this is why we travel with jerry cans. We filled up at the very last gas station we passed and uh, there's been nothing since. So literally there's nothing else we could do. These baskets come in handy, eh? Yeah. in Manitoba. This reflection space is dedicated to the indigenous children who were put on bush planes to attend residential schools. As you stand in this place, we ask you to reflect on the imagery of bush planes. We ask you to remember that although they are a symbol of economic prosperity, they are also a painful reminder of the residential school's legacy. Take a moment to consider the question, what if it was my child or grandchild who was taken away by this bush plane? Let us remember our shared history in the hopes that we will never again allow government policies to allow any children in Canada to be torn away from the loving arms of their parents, grandparents, and communities.
We are just uh, driving into the float plane base in Thompson. This is actually not going to be where we get a float plane from. We're actually picking up a shuttle driver here and uh, we're going to be driving to Leaf Rapids where we're going to meet the float plane. So some interesting logistics, but yeah, they just didn't have the kind of float plane we needed here um, at this time of year. Although that really looks like one there. Sure does. Okay, well, Jim and I have arrived at the float plane base here in Thompson, Manitoba. We are not actually flying out from here. We are getting a shuttle up to Leaf Rapids uh, where the shuttle driver is going to leave us and then drive our vehicle back here where it will remain for the duration of our trip. And a different company is going to pick us up in Leaf Rapids in a beaver and uh, he's gonna fly us out in two separate flights into where we start our trip at Melvin Lake. From Melvin, we're gonna go up the Barrington River and portage over a height of land into the South Seal River, which will follow through many large lakes into the Seal River. Then we'll continue all the way to Hudson Bay, some 700 kilometers. Me and Jim are going to finish Hudson's Bay, get a boat shuttle back to Churchill, and then take the train back here to Thompson, where our vehicle will be. But uh, yeah, these guys just didn't have um, right struts on the plane here to accommodate the canoe, so we got to go with a different company. But um, but yeah, we're just going to camp out here in the Delica tonight, and um, you know, looking looking forward to uh, hitting the uh, the water and the air tomorrow. So. Pretty exciting stuff coming up. All right. So we just loaded up the Delica um, and uh, we're about to head off on uh, about a three hour drive to Leaf Rapids, whole ways on gravel. Um, there's a place to get uh, fuel in Nelson House, um, which is less than an hour away, and after that there's nothing. So we should be able to make it there in one tank and then refill and leaf rapids for our shuttle driver to drive back. Hey, how's it going? You giving us a drive to leaf? Yep. Yeah, right on. That's driving us. you or you're driving me? Uh, that's, we're driving you, yeah. And then you're driving back, hopefully. Ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. No too many off-roading side, uh, you know. <laughs> Side adventures, eh? So, uh, what's your biggest concern, Ted? My biggest concern is just staying safe, not getting injured once we're out there, really. Um, and then, I guess, as we get close to the coast, uh, avoiding uh, a polar bear encounter of the likes that we don't want. Four by bud. Well, we have left uh, anything paved behind a while ago. Looking a little better now, but uh, we hit some muddy sections, soft road, deep ruts and stuff like that. Just kind of powered through it a little bit there. But uh, overall, the road looks pretty good into Leaf Rapids. So, you know, that's a good thing. We're not going to be able to make the time that we would have, obviously, if we were on, um, you know, a good paved road. But uh, it is what it is. So, seems to be on schedule. But uh, some interesting uh, road conditions every once in a while so far. Big rivers 
Well, we just uh, gassed up at the co-op in Leaf Rapids. Um, and we are on the final stretch here of our journey uh, to where we're meeting the float plane pilot. And uh, we got a little bit of intel. I mean, we looked into this beforehand, but there's a chance that we might be running into some ice on the lake still. Uh, you know, we're obviously hoping that that's not going to affect when the float plane can land. But, um, you know, it might make a difference on some of the, uh, the larger lakes that we have to pass through. If we hit ice, ho hopefully though we can go around it or through it and there'll be an opening. It's not going to be strong enough to walk on, but uh, that's another concern. I think we'll be okay, but you, you, know, you never really know until you're there. So, because uh, it is still June. So anyways, um, and we're just far enough north that there's still ice on the lakes. Um, anyways, yeah, we're gonna look to see where our float plane guy is. I think just straight. This is like a boat launch. Oh, maybe that's him. Yeah, no, that's him. I think that's Brad. There's our plane. What a drive it has been all the way across Ontario, through to Winnipeg, up north to Thompson, and then the final three hour stretch to Leaf Rapids and 2,852 kilometers. And now our trip is just getting started. So after careful calculation by our pilot, it looks like he's gonna be able to take us out in one shot. This is a De Havilland Beaver and has a, a really good payload. So yeah, we turns out we had less weight than we thought. We are going on about how much weight we had. Well, it turns out we are doing quite a bit better than we thought, so that's good news. Anyways, if we can, in fact, get out in one shot, it's going to, uh, it's gonna mean that uh, we're out there way faster. We're both together. We don't have to worry about being separated on the lake and um, you know, getting dropped off potentially in different spots and we might even get a few kilometers behind us today. So good news. How long did it, uh, did it take us? Like three? Or four off. Hey, okay, well, I am in the plane. Um, we're doing it in one trip. Uh, we had less gear than they thought, and so he says it's no problem. Much, much lighter sometimes than, much lighter than what the plane can handle, so we are set. We'll be taking off here shortly. What a tourist. <laughs>
doesn't look too bad, eh? Yeah, yeah it's all flooded. I think right in there is pretty good. That looks fine to me. We're gonna hit first ground right away. And we're there. Well, we are landed. We're basically gonna load our pl our canoes right off of the plane, I think, and uh, get going. So, so far, so good. Not much tow room on the other side of that. <laughs> no, not really. Look at that. See, I could be a bush pilot. Ballerina. I mean, it wasn't, I'm not pretty, but I get the job done, you know? You know? A ballerina. <laughs> Jim is the furthest thing. That would be one hell of a funny ballet. Yeah, very bow. We should be trimmed pretty good. Like these are these are tandem canoes, and we just leave the seat in the front and paddle backwards. Okay. I then we you. got a spray deck that goes over. <laughs> Maybe you could put that one right in the very bow, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, just let it sit like that. Like some people would bump this up far further, but then you have to have a removable carrying yoke right. and it's wider. So when you're trying to like cross around and do white water strokes, it's the canoe's wider and yeah. it can be trickier. So just stay, stay All right. perfect. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. No problem. No problem at all. Okay. Best of luck here. Yeah. This is actually, this is great. I've never done this before. Just loaded right on the pontoons. This is actually way easier. That is everything we need. Oh man. Just beauty. We have a pretty standard amount. Okay, well, here we are on the banks of Melvin Lake in the northern Manitoba wilderness. Our float plane pilot just took off and left us all by ourselves out here. And wow, it turned out to be an awesome day. Beautiful, beautiful flight. And uh, yeah. Dad, what the f Oh, karma's a bitch. Uh, yeah, beautiful flight out and uh, the first thing we have to do is go up river. We got a bit of a look at it from the air. 
Looks like there's a lot of water. It's not gonna be too dry and it looks like a long way. Lots of bends, some strong current in areas, but it looked manageable, which was promising, but we know that is gonna be a slog. So first thing first, we're starving. We're gonna grab a quick bite to eat and basically uh, start paddling and of course take a few casts in this lake um, before we start heading up the creek. So maybe we'll have fish for dinner tonight. Yeah, uh, so we are extremely remote, extremely uh, um, isolated out here. And where we're going, we're just getting further and further. It's not like we're paddling back to where we got flown in from. Uh, so yeah, we gotta be careful out there. Okay, well, uh, pemmican, dried bison meat, dried raspberries mixed with tallow. A lot of energy. I actually made this at home before the trip. It's a traditional food of the fur trade. Voyagers used to eat at least a pound and a half of that every day. And uh, I made it with a bison that I harvested in the Yukon. Here, hammer this. Let me know what you think. Let's trying out some pemmican Jim made. Not bad, eh? It's gross. <laughs> it's pretty good. Mmm. It tastes like it has a lot of calories. It doesn't have much flavor, really. Mm -hmm. You know? And it tastes like you're eating Crisco or something. Yeah, that's what that's what tallow is. Yum! Well, Ready to tackle the wilderness. Ted's busting out the tortilla. Tortillas. That's the same thing. PB and jam. In Canada, we call it peanut butter and jam, not peanut butter and jelly. So, if any of you Americans are trying to disguise as a Canadian, saying, you know, in some sort of, I don't know, maple syrup heist situation. Spy, something like that. Yeah, make sure that you don't say, give me a peanut butter and jelly, or you'll be busted. It'd be like that scene from uh, Glorious Bastards when he's like, try glasses, and they're like, the German tree is this, and then they shoot him. Yeah. Little Mexican flair here. So, you want a mouthful? So, lunch is, sometimes when I want to take the exhausting task of making a peanut butter and jam tortilla, other than that, it's pemmican and other energy bars and trail mix. Breakfast is oatmeal or no meal. Fun, uh. Isn't it supposed to like clip in? I think so. Huh. The double blade's not working. Oh, that's an issue. Uh, might have to do a field repair here. I'm turn it. Break on the joystick or something. Am I like just huge tripods in your shot here? Yeah. Hi, honey. Hi. I am great. We have been flown into the wilderness. Both of us. Yeah, they took us out in one flight. <laughs> I know. All right, we're gonna go catch a fish in your honor. Uh, yes. Here. 
There we go. That's pretty good, huh? Always bring a little duct tape. Lesson of the day. strokes of the trip uh, already started to head up river unfortunately a winds picked up though and we're coming into a headwind wind blowing out of the northeast um, that's why having this double blade paddle is nice for paddling into wind we have to make it about 35 kilometers a day so Having a uh, something that'll get you there a little quicker, I'll take it. It's already uh, 5:40, so we uh, we don't really want to put too much time into fishing. Where we're going to be mostly fishing is in the uh, big lakes that we're going to be traveling through. And uh, in the South Seal and Seal and that. So, tried a few casts in here though, but no luck. Ted got snagged. We saw fish jumping, looked like some pike for sure, but you know, maybe we'll catch something in this bay. Here is the current that we gotta start going up. So, there is our way upriver. Definitely starting to look a little more concerning. Strong current to paddle up. Could be some fish here. It looks pretty fishy here. Here, yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. Oh, I just saw one. Little one. Don't know what it was. There we go. Oh yeah, got one. A pike. A little pike. First fish of the trip. Huh? Here's your big brother, bud. Little guy. Just a little guy. So Jim is on the board. On the board. He's on the board. With a small pike. It's exciting, Ted. We'd be pike all the way up at the next rapid even. Oh, bite. Yeah. There's one. That one feels a little better. Oh, Waldo. A Waldo. Where's Waldo, Ted? A keeper. Where is Waldo, Ted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know we'd be getting into any walleye, Ted. There he is. Keep Ted. Sure. Look at that. Yeah, Jim's on the board. Trouble species. That's a good eating size. Oh, oh yeah. That's a pike. It's gotta be. Whoa. 
Whoa, whoa, hey. Ah, it's a tank. It's a tank. Wow. All right, buddy. What do you think? Good first fish, eh? You gonna keep it? Look at that beaut, yes! Oh, what a first fish. Well, Ted was a little slow to get on the board, but landed a tank walleye. How'd that feel, Ted? Oh, it felt, uh, felt exhilarating. 